Uh, let's roll then. Yeah, as most of you know, uh, INSEA was started by me and Sergey uh, some 12 years ago. And of course, over the years, we have scaled up to a team of around 40 individuals, uh, professionals uh, working in different spheres, starting from instructional design to uh, visual design to production to uh, learning technologies. But of course, uh, we have always tried to uh, scale up our operation, not only uh, uh, extensively, but also intensively, right? And uh, that means that you have to be smart how you produce uh, e-learning. Uh, and over the years, uh, we understood that building another project from scratch uh, is, of course, a very, very uh, tedious thing to do. In the old days, uh, SMEs would come to us and say, uh, I want my project to stand out. Can you offer something uh, completely different? Uh, can you make it uh, very uh, kind of more engaging, more interesting uh, than the previous e-learning? So you know you are all the time in this uh, uh, kind of uh, game where you have to come up with something new every time. And it's uh, it's not a creativity problem, of course, uh, for us here at Tanzania. We have enough potential for that, but it also means that every project is a very big endeavor. And so and if uh, on average you are producing in a company one kind of e-learning, a simple one, then those projects would be, you know, like spikes, uh, which is uh, in many different ways not efficient. So uh, kind of making a parallel uh, here with waste management, uh, we came to the conclusion that uh, this is not the way to go. Uh, this is not scalable. You cannot produce enough of e-learning content uh, uh, with such approach. And uh, more importantly, also, uh, we don't have to prove that e-learning is uh, as effective as, let's say, face-to-face -face learning as we did 10 years ago, right? Because that was uh, very much uh, the question from the SMEs very often that, uh, how can we make it even better than our face-to-face -face training? That was kind of the main competitor. Right now, when our learners are used to using different platforms, when they are used to uh, seeing the same interfaces over and over again, that doesn't make a lot of uh, sense. So uh, the kind of the, uh, in the last five to seven years, our goal here at Antea was to try to reduce, reuse, you know, and recycle, right? If we draw that parallel. Uh, so let's try and uh, uh, dissect what I mean by that, right? And let's start uh, from a very obvious thing is a user interface, right? Uh, user interfaces, uh, uh, developing every time a new user interface is not a very good idea because it's not only costly to develop, uh, but it's also costly to learn uh, for our learners. I mean, imagine them going uh, uh, going into Facebook, into their Facebook account every morning and finding different kind of interface uh, or Instagram or YouTube or any other platform they would use. When we think about e-learning and user interface, I mean here not only the learning platform, but also our courses, I mean, what, they don't really need a new interface every time they log in. Uh, just to draw a parallel with uh, Avengers, right? Those who, of you who know the franchise, as you can see, they have created some kind of character, some kind of approach, and they're just reusing and reusing and re reusing that again, right? For uh, not only economic reasons, because it's cheaper, you already have so many things in place, but also for the learners, uh, for the sorry, for the their spectators, uh, when you go to an Avengers movie, you know what to expect, right? Uh, you pretty much imagine what the meta uh, plot going to be, the characters, uh, and so on. So you're kind of you know what's in the box, right? So therefore, 
the, uh, to be able to produce scalable e-learning content, you really have to start with an attitude shift, right? That you are going to be, a you are going to uh, reuse, uh, reduce and recycle, so to say, right? And that starts really on this attitude level, uh, which is a very, uh, uh, it is a very big challenge because so many uh, stakeholders, starting from SMEs, of course, will be trying to get you out of this mindset. Right. And they will not be coming to you with that mindset. Their mindset will be, I want my product to stand out. Right. I want to kind of outcompete other courses. Um, right. Uh, so how do we uh, uh, so where can we start? What are the actionable items? Of course, we can start building that mindset and that approach by reusing old courses. Right, that that makes sense. But before I go any uh, any further, uh, question is: Have you ever tried reusing your old courses? Is it easy to do? Have you been able to reuse something from the old e-learning courses into new ones? Any reactions on that? Yes, excellent. Is it easy? Is it, you know, if you have an e-learning course, is it uh, very easy to take that and reuse that uh, into the next courses? Templates, yeah, exactly. Uh, this is the, this kind of the key word we will get to, templates, because what we have discovered that uh, if you start reusing something, in the beginning of a project, I mean, you have your second e-learning project, you're trying to reuse something from the first project, uh, most likely that will be very, very difficult because you have to plan for that reuse, right? Uh, what I mean is that uh, if you are building your first project, you already have to start thinking, okay, which parts of this project can be used next time? Uh, navigation, visual elements, things like that. Uh, so, so you kind of have to plan that ahead because going back to something that is produced, you might find that uh, you don't have your sources anymore. It was somehow produced in a way that things are not editable uh, and many, many other you know, technical mistakes you can make. So you have to plan that reuse uh, in advance, so to say. One thing we do at Intea, for example, is that when uh, we know that there is a multi-modular project or this is a new customer we're working with and we're going to produce a couple of modules on different topics, we start from prototyping. And in that prototyping phase, we are already taking into account uh, you know, the future pipeline of courses so that although we are producing, for example, the first course on Lean, uh, we know that there's going to be design thinking later on, or there's going to be, you know, some management courses later on. So you are kind of thinking ahead and uh, always, always try to keep sources as much as possible, make things editable. And when I think uh, talk about sources, these are not only your storyline files, you know, or your after effect files, but also scripts. Uh, because sometimes you will find that this, this is the most valuable part to share with your SMEs on the next project so that they really know how to prepare content. Uh, another problem uh, you might encounter, there is a, a mutation. You know, if you uh, are not careful enough with your templates, with uh, reusage, you will find that, you know, module three and four I are somehow similar, you know, you can see they, they are from the same batch, but if you look at module one and module nine, then there is some mutation happened. You know, it's like, it's like an evolution process, right? Uh, if we look at our closest relatives, uh, you know, uh, from the homo species, they will probably be very uh, similar to us. But if we go look at our 
<laughs> you know, uh, relatives from uh, thousands of years ago or millions of years, years ago, they all be different, right? There is this mutation. Uh, this is where, uh, this is where, uh, sorry, uh, this is where the templates come into play, right? That you have to uh, no, have this template structure I will talk about later. Um, uh, the last thing to think about is when you are uh, on an e-learning project, uh, think about that marketing component from the very start. Because if you are, if you will be trying to promote the course, if you will need banners, trailers, testimonials, uh, any other uh, materials, and uh, those of you have who have seen our uh, breakfast torn sales and marketing techniques will remember that we talked about these things then you have to plan that ahead and you have to do that, uh, think about it in the beginning. Because what happens is that when you, you run a couple of breakfasts with Sergey and you only have video recordings and you try to take a photo, then you go and take a screenshot and you get this kind of quality, right? Because we don't have a good quality photo to put uh, on uh, our YouTube channel, right? So, so these kind of mistakes, right? So it's not only the course, but it's also all the kind of infrastructure around it. Uh, and from reuse, uh, we can now go to what we call the Lego sets, right? Or the templates, uh, because this is when you really step these things up. I mean, you are not copying, you know, slides from the previous course and remaking them into uh, what suits your needs in, in the next course, but you are really building uh, a system, but to build a system, you have to first of all optimize your toolkit. Remember, we talked on, uh, during our last uh, uh, breakfast. So, if we assume recession is coming, probably uh, costs will be cut. Uh, probably we'll have to think of which uh, tools uh, we keep and which tools we have to let go. Uh, but that approach of letting go toolkit. Uh, some part of your toolkit is also good when you want to scale things up because if every project has a very different approach and you want to have animations here, scenarios there, uh, you know, text and picture here, uh, a whiteboard animation there, so you will be living with a huge toolkit and some templating and systematic approach is not uh, really possible. So you have to contain that part of your uh, business. Uh, and that will allow you to build a user experience or design systems, right? I will show you a couple of examples in a minute, but the idea is that uh, it is not the content uh, that drives the process, but it's a system in which you put content where it has to follow certain rules. Yeah, rule. an easy word to use here is template, right? It's best, a basic kind of a approach to building that design system that you have a set of templates. You try to produce as much as possible using these templates. And when you have to kind of uh, improve something, you know, or you have to update, then you think about templates, not your old courses, right? So that you're always kind of the system comes first and, uh, you know, the e-learning modules, the e-learning courses come second. Uh, but what about variety, right? Your SMEs will tell you we don't want our course to look like the course from that other department. We want to stand out. Uh, we want to be a bit different. I mean, the cheapest way to do that is color coding. Look at this. You have uh, one course, you have another, an another course. I mean, give different departments different colors. You know, your brand books probably have a couple of colors in there. So you, you can do that. I mean, safety courses will be pink. Uh, sales courses will be green. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, product courses will be blue or something like that, right? Or you create some other element that makes them different. So uh, kind of if we were thinking about scalability, we're thinking about mass production, uh, we have to think in those uh, uh, platforms and systems. 
You know, uh, nowadays, uh, Volkswagen is not building every their car, you know, separately. They have a platform and then they use that platform for different uh, purposes. And from, uh, you know, Volkswagen Polo to Cayenne, basically, you know, that's that, that's almost the same uh, platform, so to say, or it's just a couple of platforms they're using for different segments. Uh yeah, and here are just a couple of visualizations how these systems uh, work. So usually it's a set of templates, a set of explanations how we use different colors. So it's a bit like a brand book, you know, and, uh, uh, and this is probably the right way to think about it, right? That we have a company brand book and now we have to adapt it to our templates and cre create those uh, Legos or cookie cutters, you know, and by combining those Lego pieces in different ways, we can achieve very different result, right? Think of Lego stores. I mean, most of what you see there is uh, produced or showcased from a finite uh, number of Lego pieces, but you can uh, you can produce things starting from you know a dollhouse to you know. Uh, uh, Princess Castle to Darth Vader to uh, what is it, Big Ben uh, building and so on, right? So that's kind of the approach, that, that's kind of the mindset, right? Uh, and that approach, of course, will not only make it easier to produce, but also to design and also to work with content. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, because the pro move here is to go from these. Uh, technical templates uh, to instructional templates. Basically by saying, okay, we have a set of templates that look uh, in certain way, but we will have uh, different, let's call them also storyboards for product courses, compliance training, process training, or soft skills for that matter. How does that look? Uh, or yeah, or video templates and webinar recordings. That's another uh, separate story uh, that every time we produce a video, we also have certain templates, how we do that, right? Uh, how do we start the video? Uh, what's in the middle? How do we finish it? How do we prepare for it? How, what do we wear when we come to a video recording or a webinar recording, right? And what I mean by that is that when your SMEs come to you and say, for example, we need another product, product training, you're not taking their content and squeezing it into your uh, visual or uh, uh, technical templates. What you do is you say, guys, you have your material very well, but now we will restructure it instructionally into the product template, which, which we have that, for example, always starts with the client story. Then we talk about advantages. Then we explain how the product works. Then we explain how we sell it, how we deal with objections and answer client uh, questions to it. Maybe there is a section on how we upsell, cross-sell that product. Uh, then we play out a customer scenario as realistic as possible. Uh, we give some reference materials to the external sources. Then we check the knowledge or certify them if that's important and that's it, right? So, and your SMEs are already bound by that uh, instructional template. Uh, and if they come to you, you know, as they sometimes like with 80 slides about a product or a process, you tell them, this is the template. This is how I need you to restructure it for us to be efficient, right? Here, here are your kind of high level cookie cutters uh, to use. Um, so the benefits are then that we are really in control of conversation with SMEs and we can get this scalability because all the projects start and you know go in the same way, starting from the SME discussion. It's not like we have to uh, use force to squeeze all of their content in our templates. So we give control, also some control to them and also some uh, responsibility to restructure it in this way. Uh, we can estimate our projects much better because if we say a 
product training has this kind of uh, instructional template. This instructional template means that this is going to be a 30 minute or 20 minute uh, learning. This is our standard. Then uh, you can much better estimate uh, how much money you need for this project, how much time you need and effort from the experts, right? And this is what we have been trying to achieve here internally because we get customers from very much different industries very different level of knowledge about e-learning from very basic to a pro level. And of course, everybody wants to get a quote really, uh, really quick to make up their minds if they're going ahead with the project or not. And um, uh, this has been our idea how we can, uh, you know, make it easier for ourselves, you know, to price and estimate uh, projects. And of course that, uh, leads to some other benefits down the road as well. Uh, uh, and in, the, in that regard also, uh, in terms of mindset, right, uh, it's easier for you to make these, to manage this change, right, to, uh, uh, to provide SMEs with ways to work with uh, and not only SMEs but the business as such with ways to work with solutions you know with uh, uh, predefined things uh, and it it may it will make much easier for you to talk to all these different stakeholders because it's not uh, you're not starting from scratch they kind of come to you uh, uh, with a you know with a need to produce a product you know a product training and then you start telling them all those different things they have to do and all those different things you have to be doing together with them to produce it. And it becomes a bigger problem. And they realize, ah, we just wanted an e-learning course, but now uh, how are we going to do, how are we going to do that? We don't have time for it. No, you're coming with a very clear proposal. Here's the template guy. Here's the approach. Here's the philosophy. What I need from you is take your content, restructure it, and then it will all go smoothly, more or less. Uh, finally, in the uh, couple of minutes left, uh, I would like to uh, talk very briefly about the next level, uh, how you can approach scalability. Because uh, although you might have these templates, for example, compliance template, product training, uh, template uh, skills, uh, so soft skill a template, you know, and this rough storyboard you're usually following based on, uh, uh, you know, uh, your knowledge of adult education, for example. But compliance in different businesses is a bit different, right? Uh, compliance in a bank for an office worker, you know, uh, non-compliance will result in fines to that institution. Whereas compliance in a medical institution, that might result, you know, in a loss of life uh, and uh, criminal charges, right? So the outcomes are very different. Same goes for products, you know. Same goes for, uh, you know, uh, some uh, trainings on uh, soft skills. They can have very different outcomes. And at some point here at Tintin, we started thinking, okay, how can we deal with that uncertainty? How we can scale it up? And uh, I will not go very much into detail about it, uh, but we started developing, a, you know, kind of high level storyboards for different situations. Uh, for example, uh, a storyboard, if we're talking about skills, and that skills training, it might be compliance, it might be sales training, maybe soft skills training, or it might be behavior or belief, uh, or actually the lowest level is knowledge, right? So where uh, we would start uh, by talking not only about the topic of the training, let's say, is it the compliance training? Okay, what kind of compliance it is, is it? But also about how can we categorize that uh, training? Are we concentrating on knowledge level or skills or behavior or beliefs? And then we would have, you know, 
a kind of a predefined template. How do we deal with, uh, let's say, if it's a behavior training, right? It, it's a completely a separate topic, which we might uh, probably cover in one of uh, the next breakfasts. Uh, we don't have uh, enough uh, time to cover it today, but uh, what we try to talk about today is of course scalability and the first steps to it right and to remind you to summarize is that uh you can start by reusing your old trainings but a much better way would be to start building that design system that production system with templates that would allow you to scale up your production uh and a much better way, uh, or not much better, but it's complementary rather, it's a bit of higher uh, order, is to build instructional design uh, templates for different typical situations you have. Uh, so is it a compliance training, a product training, you know, uh, is it a, a skill training uh, or, or soft skill training? So try to build that and then use templates to produce it. So uh with that in mind uh um uh, i would like to uh finish this breakfast uh think uh think about your current situation think about how you are producing trainings think what you can reuse what you can reduce and what you can recycle uh and uh think of how to make a system out of it so that the time from the idea of producing a course to the time of delivering the course is shorter. So it's kind of a bit of a lean exercise. Um, thank you so much for being uh, today with me in this Intel breakfast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, write in chat your reflections on it. Uh, if there is something you would like us to cover in the future breakfast, let us know. We are always happy to take on your ideas and try to work with them. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you so much for being with me here today. Hopefully next time it's again both of us, me and Sergey. Uh, have a nice weekend. Take care.